y'all. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about history, specifically about the stories of how countries are formed. Now, here in the United States, when we think about the birth of our nation, we think about the Founding Fathers, right? Who here has heard the story of George Washington chopping down the cherry tree? Alright class, settle down. Now today, we are going to be talking about George Washington. When George Washington was a little boy, he took an axe and cut down his father's favorite cherry tree. When his father learned about this, he went and confronted Washington. And he said, son, did you cut down my cherry tree? George Washington said, yes, father, I did cut down your cherry tree. I cannot tell a lie. Ooh. And even though his father was really mad that the tree had been cut down, he also couldn't be mad at George Washington because he had told the truth. And that, kids, is why you should always tell the truth. Then one day, you might end up a great man like George Washington. Okay. Most of us in the U.S. are taught this story when we're little, right? But did you know that it's actually completely made up? It never happened. It's a lie. But just because it isn't true doesn't mean that this story isn't important because it's still part of our national story. A nation is a country that's made up of a group of people who share the same language, culture, and history and live in one area. So when you're trying to bring all sorts of different people together to form a nation, it's really important that you establish a clear idea of what that nation's history is, even if it's not 100% true. Today, we're going to be talking about national stories that also might not be completely true. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the national history of the Czech Republic, or as it used to be called, Bohemia. Sidebar. Okay, so to say that the Czech Republic used to be called Bohemia isn't exactly true. The country that we call the Czech Republic, or Czechia, is mostly made up of two different regions, Bohemia and Moravia. Bohemia is the region that makes up the majority of Czechia. And in the Czech language, the words for Czech and Bohemian are pretty much the same. But for a lot of its history, Moravia was a separate thing from Bohemia. And today, a lot of Moravians don't consider themselves Czechs, so it's kind of complicated. There are lots of old stories that can tell us some really important things about Czechia. One really good example is St. Wenceslas, the patron saint of the Czechs. This guy, who we're going to talk about a little bit more later, lived about a hundred years after St. Wenceslas and described him as their holiest patron and martyr, who helped spread Catholicism and was pleasant to both God and the people. He sounds like a really nice guy to me. Today, the Czechs see St. Wenceslas as a symbol of the nation's essential goodness because of his piety and his commitment to peace. But today, I'm going to be talking about a different story. A story about the founding of the Premislid dynasty. Dear YouTube gods, I am here to beg for your forgiveness. I do not know how to pronounce these words. I searched on Google. Every pronunciation guide is different. Please don't make fun of my pronunciation in the comments, please. I am begging you. Thank you. The Premislids were the first and last Bohemian dynasty. That means they were the first royal family from Bohemia and 
all of the royals after them came from some other country. This particular story was part of the Bohemian Chronicle, basically an old-timey history book. It was written around the early part of the 1100s by a guy called Cosmas of Prague, the same guy I mentioned earlier, who was a priest in, you guessed it, Prague, the capital of Czechia. The story goes a little something like this. All right, sweet pea, here is your water. And let's get you all tucked in. And now it's time to go to bed. Oh, all right, just one. Where were we? There we go. Do, do, do. Pretty place. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there was a group of people who moved to a beautiful land called Czechy or Bohemia. At one time, this group, the Czechs, were ruled by a sorceress named Lubusha. She was fair and wise, but the men, they didn't want to be ruled by a woman. So they told her that she had to marry. She reluctantly agreed, but that night she met with her two sisters, who were also sorceresses, and they magically predicted the name and location of the man that she would marry. This man, however, was a humble plowman named Tremsel. When she told the people, they went to find this man and bring him back to marry the sorceress and become their new duke. But, before leaving his plow behind, he brought his old shoes with him so that generations after, people would see them and remember their humble origins and that all people are equal. All right, it's time for bed. Good night. That was a pretty interesting story, right? But that's the thing, it's just a story. You see, we're pretty much sure that that was just made up. Could there have actually been a guy called Premisal and could he have been the founder of the dynasty? Sure, we don't have any record of him existing, but he still might have. But was he the destined ruler chosen by a sorceress? Probably not. Right? So, now we have to ask ourselves, did our guy Cosmos just completely make this story up? Well, no, because he wasn't the first person to write about it. Christianus wrote about this story over a hundred years before Cosmos did. Granted, his version is a lot shorter and less detailed, but he still talks about a guy named Premisal who became the Duke of Bohemia because of a sorceress's prophecy. But even though Cosmas didn't make up this story, here's what people think he actually did do. Probably he took this story that already existed, blew it up, and made it the center of his history of Bohemia on purpose. But why would he lie, right? Why not just tell the truth? Well, let's ask him. <clears throat> Hello? Hey, Cosmos, my man, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, you know me, just, uh, being Catholic. <laughs> Great, so, buddy, uh, when you were writing your Bohemian Chronicle, great read, by the way, really riveting stuff, um, you didn't 
actually believe that whole thing about the sorceress, did you? Hmm. Yeah, no, probably not. Uh-huh, uh-huh, got it, got it. So, uh, why did you include it? Well, don't ask me. I'm dead. Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Hello? Hello? <sighs> well, since we can't ask him, I guess we'll never be 100% certain. But there are historians like these who believe it has something to do with what I told you earlier about Bohemia and Moravia. You see, before the year 900, Bohemia wasn't actually all that important and didn't really even exist yet. What was important and powerful, though, was Moravia. At that time, Bohemia was really just the western part of the Moravian Empire. When the Moravian Empire was destroyed in 906, all that power and importance shifted to Prague, and that's really when Bohemia started to exist as its own state. So now, in the 1000s and 1100s, you've got all these powerful people in Prague, and powerful people like to think they're the descendants of other powerful people. I mean, think about how Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, had Virgil write a whole book to prove that Augustus was actually the descendant of the guy who founded Rome. So, all of these important people in Prague, they don't want to think of themselves as just the leftovers from the Moravian Empire. They wanted to be special, right? Which is probably why Cosmas took a story that already existed, blew it up, and made it this story about how the Bohemians are actually the descendants of this super special people who lived near Prague and were led by this mythically, magically chosen guy. Most likely, he deliberately chose to ignore or at least make less important the fact that Bohemia used to be part of the Moravian Empire in order to make Bohemia seem more special. But that still leaves us with the question, why did the Bohemians want to have a history that was centered around Prague? Well, remember the definition of the word nation? A nation is a group of people that have the same history and culture. In other words, a common identity. When Cosmos writes the history of Bohemia, he gets to decide what kind of history and what kind of identity he wants to create. When we look at national myths like this, we shouldn't necessarily see them as historical fact. Instead, we should examine them to figure out what sort of context and culture they were written in. For instance, let's look at the way that Cosmos talks about Premisal. Cosmas describes Premisal as a thoughtful ruler who keeps his old shoes to ensure that our descendants know their origins, because in nature, we are all equal. Now, did Cosmas actually hear Premisal say those words? <laughs> of course not. This whole story happened 500 years before the time when Cosmas is writing. But... When Premisal says that the Czech people should be humble and treat all people as equals, we can infer that that's actually what Cosmos himself believes. And today, that message still holds true. People still look to this story as the eh, supposed founding of the country and as an example of Czech egalitarianism. Whether or not Cosmos was 100% responsible for the story's popularity, if his goal really was to establish a touchstone for Czech national identity, then, well, he succeeded. The story of George Washington and the cherry tree tells Americans to be honest, and the story of the founding of Bohemia tells Czechs to be humble. Both of these stories tell us really important things about how nations view themselves and what they value. It's important that when we hear stories, we are always critical 
about whether or not what we're being told is completely historically accurate, and that we always examine what exactly the author is trying to tell us. Which is why I would encourage all of you to look up the sources that I used in this video for yourselves. I have included them with the text on screen and in the description box. If you don't trust me, which you shouldn't, <laughs> you should read them for yourselves and figure out what you think. And if you're from Czechia, feel free to correct me in the comments. Or if you're from any country, tell me a little bit about a national story that comes from your home. All right, see y'all next time.